So an investor looking at your company as a prospect might ask uh, what the upside is of a royalty company versus a junior mining company, which you know the upside there is obvious. Yeah, so I mean, we're directly related to gold and silver price. So you're getting that direct leverage. We don't have the capital costs or the operating costs compared to typical mining companies, able to keep the GNA low while that revenue is coming in. And we take it from the top line, whether it's the royalty or the stream. So we're not affected by those inflationary costs that are necessarily happening to the mining companies. And we're really able to target our investment dollars with our strategy of revenue producing assets, bringing cash into the company. Alexandra, what are your share in joints today? She is the CEO of Empress Royalty. What is a royalty business model? How does it differ from a traditional mining stock? And why should we be interested? This is the theme of our discussion at the Vancouver Resource Investment Conference. Welcome. Thank you for having me. It's great to be here and talk to your audience. Alexandra, before we talk about the company, let's learn a little bit about you because you were not a geologist for your entire life. A little bit different from some of the more traditional mining executives here. You worked in capital markets. How did you transition into this particular company? Yeah, so I started my career off at PricewaterhouseCoopers. Yeah. I joined the mining group in 1997, just after Brex. was jumping off, going down to the uh, technology and dot-com floor. Yeah. And then I joined a group called Endeavor Financial, which is a leading investment banking firm specializing in mining right. as an analyst. And then I worked my way up through the ranks and I got involved in the project finance side or the structured finance side. Sure. So that means we were helping uh, mining companies that wanted to get their projects into development, um, helping arrange that banking finance. Mm -hmm. So I did that for about 10 years in London. I became director of structured finance. It was involved with over $1.5 billion of mining finance transactions. Mm -hmm. So for me, I've always been in the sort of finance, mining finance side of things and helping mines get into production. And that really is the key focus of Empress, is getting mines in production or helping them expand. At what point did you decide, I want to work on the mining side and not just doing deals? Um, you know, mining's sort of been in my DNA. I started off as the head of research at Endeavor Financial, aka the receptionist. Um, back when I was 14, going through the yellow pages, calling up the companies, asking them to send the annual reports, yeah. um, putting them into the old school cardboard uh, files and the things. Right, and right. so I really grew up in the industry. Um, and for me, it was a natural fit to evolve to where we've got Empress now. Okay. And obviously, you could have chosen any type of mining company to work for and with. Why in particular the royalty business model? I really like the royalty and streaming company, um, the industry. I mean, essentially, we are an investment company that happens to be investing in mining. And being able to structure transactions, being able to execute and, and get great returns as a result of that. So at Empress, we're very much focused on the creation of new royalties or streams, um, and as a result of that, getting some great returns. Okay. Uh, tell us a bit more about how this works. So you, you are an investment holding company or not, yeah, not so much? How so does I, I think it's probably better to take a step back and yeah. talk about like what is a royalty in stream exactly, and the yes. different types. So right. a royalty is where we invest in a company and we receive a percentage of revenue from that mine production. Some of us like a record company where you get a royalty in a record. Then there's a stream, which is where we invest in a company and we're able to buy gold or silver at a deeply discounted price from the producer. At Empress, we do a combination of both. And with a streaming structure, it's really another form of financing for mine. So they've got some debt, some equity, and then we can provide stream. It's less restrictive um, than, say, banking financing, and it's not dilutive like raising equity. So this is what we really focus on doing. And, and you know, there's essentially three types of royalty companies. I mean, there's a lot out there, but there's sort of three general investment theses. Um, there's the exploration generation, or what we call prospect generators. Early stage, and expensive to acquire, but you know, it's a long lead time to revenue generation in, if in fact it does become a mine. Then there's other groups that are out there, um, their investment thesis strategy is to buy third party existing royalties. So there's no direct relationship with the company, but it's pretty simple to acquire, it's just sort of an assignment, reassignment of the agreement. Um, and it's become very crowded, especially with so many new entrants in the last couple of years. Part of a competing bid process, paying a premium, and historically low returns. So we like the creation side, where we're able to directly invest our investment dollars into assets that will be producing revenue. We have a direct relationship with the company. So that means I'm not waiting for quarterly financial results to come out to know what's happening. 
I have that direct relationship with the mine. I get monthly reporting, I have bi-weekly calls, we go to site. We're really able to do extensive due diligence to ensure that what we're structuring with them to help them advance works for them because they have to be successful for us to be successful. Is it fair to say that you are kind of like a private equity firm in the mining sector? Is that a fair comparison? I don't think it's really fair because we're not, um, you know, we're not taking an equity position in the companies. We are providing them with the capital they need to move forward and then we get paid a return for that. And that's part of the revenue top line or, you know, we get direct gold and silver. So we have an investment in Peru. They ship their gold dory bars to Switzerland to Metalor on a weekly basis. And then we get those gold credits to our Bank of Montreal account. So we're getting, you know, with Empress, you're really getting direct leverage to gold and silver. So uh, an investor might ask you, Alexandra, what is the value proposition of investing in your particular company? Why can't I just go on your website, look at your portfolio companies and invest, invest in them myself? Yeah, so we've invested, I mean, the real, I, I'm obviously from the finance background, yeah. so it's the real numbers. Right. We've invested $19.5 million US to date in the portfolio. Right. Keeping in mind, we only took the company public or founded right. the sure. company three years ago. Um, we've invested 19 and a half into the portfolio. Of that, we've got three revenue generating assets and the net asset value is 47 million of those. Those three assets that we've invested in are forecasted to generate about $50 million of revenue over the next five years using current metal prices. And our market cap is just 26 million US. You, you said the NAV is 40 something million? $47 million now. But they're generating 50 million? It'll generate 50 million of revenue over the next five years using current metal prices. Why is prices. there such a discount? Exactly. So that's why we're out here talking with individuals like yourself and putting the story out there. You know, we've, we had a concept, um, you know, the, the real origin of, of Empress was we were seeing at Endeavor Financial that the streaming companies were doing bigger and bigger financing size, yeah. $100 million plus, and no one was providing the smaller uh, junior and intermediate sized companies the streaming financing option. So that is why we set up Empress. We launched with a concept and a strategy and we're just now delivering on that strategy with the revenue coming in. We're forecasting about $10 million of revenue coming in in 2024. Interesting. And let's talk about your portfolios right now, or your portfolio. Uh, you've got three assets, you said. Tell us a bit more about yeah, these three, assets. Yeah, three key assets. So we've got um, two streams in a royalty. Yeah. I'll talk about our first one, which is in Peru. Yeah. It's called um, Sierra Antipite. So it's a gold mine. We have a 4.5% gold, uh, gold stream on that project. We invested $10 million to help them expand their production. It was a private company. They didn't have access to the equity markets. So we invested that capital to help them get from 750 tons to 1,000 tons capacity. That's happening now. They've been uh, bringing revenue in to Empress over the last two years, and, and that's really going to be ramping up when they get to full capacity in the next month or so. It's just at site in October. Um, then we have another one that was a development asset that's now gotten into production. That's called Manica, owned by another private group called MMP in Mozambique. They needed $3 million to finish off the plant. We provided that to them. Um, and for our $3 million, we've got over 3% royalty on that project for a period of time. The annual cash flow coming to Empress is over $1.5 million US, or so $1.6 million using 1750 gold. Um, so that one's been consistent revenue coming in for the last year. And then the other development asset we invested in was called Talawetto, owned by Luca Mining. Right. Um, there was some debt, there was some equity, it's a public company. We provided what at the time was the last bit of capital they needed to, to get back into production or to get into production. We invested $5 million. Um, you know, they've been through a restructuring the last year of that company, and we've been working with them through that restructuring. And right now they've got the first ball mill going, the second one's coming online, and they're expected to reach commercial production in the next couple months. Um, and that will bring in a nice silver stream for us in terms of that investment. What's your process for picking projects to work with? Um, so we have the strategic relationship with Endeavor Financial, large shareholder. Again, I was at Endeavor, so it's my old team. Yeah. So we go through a rigorous, uh, you know, it's, it's the three Ps, the people, the place, the project. Uh, we've got a vast network. So we go through our network. We know opportunities, identify them. Um, and then once we find the right opportunity and it makes sense and for us to invest and it fits within the diversification specs that we have within our portfolio at that point in time. We do a desktop review. Um, we use Endeavor's financials, uh, mining engineers, geologists, uh, investment bankers to really check these deals out, yeah. vet them. If they make sense, then we advance with the due diligence, as I was talking about earlier, and then we get documentation. And if all of that checks out, we bring them to portfolio. There's a lot of work that goes into this. We're not putting out, buying, acquiring new portfolios all the time because we're creating them. 
Some of these are quick, some of them are quite, take quite a bit of time. Um, we've rejected four deals in the last 18 months. Um, one of them we had worked on, we've been working for about nine months, we have exclusivity on. And all the aspects of everything was working out except for, you know, when we got deep into the technical due diligence of the third party engineers, um, we weren't comfortable with the mine plan. So they've made some adjustments now, done some more work on that over the last couple of months. And now we'll really start to see the fruition of that come through if it makes sense. So we're, we're negotiating yeah. this. I'm curious, when you provide financing for these companies, uh, that capital, does that come from your internal uh, cash flow or is that, do you have to raise capital for that? So initially we did raise some money and that yeah. was what allowed us to build the portfolio. Of course. And we had a debt facility in place, which we've just restructured now. So we just did a restructuring of Nabari. So we've got a $28 million accordion facility available to us. And what this means is we can draw down what we want when the projects come up. So we drew down three and a half to repay our existing debt. Yeah. I've got five million earmarked for an opportunity we're gonna complete in South Africa, or expect to complete in South Africa. And I've got another 20 million available to us, which I can redeploy into the portfolio, I can deploy into the portfolio, the new investments. So I don't need to do any more equity raisings. We're gonna use the debt facility. And as now we're becoming cash flow positive, and I'm forecasting about 10 million in revenue this year with a g a burn rate of about 1.7, 1.8 million, I can reinvest that money into the portfolio without dilution to shareholders. What's your priority for this cash? Part of the cash is producing assets, um, especially with the debt facility. Um, I want to really help manage to expand, and there's a lot of opportunity in that right now. Mm -hmm. So that's sort of the high level, pro or the, the most uh, current ones that we're looking at bringing in. And as we mature as a company, as the rest of the portfolio stabilizes the revenue, especially with the next one getting stabilized, then we might go a little bit earlier stage with some more free cash flow, like more development stage assets again. Have your investors asked you or requested you to pay down some of this debt given how high interest rates are? We did. We repaid the existing facility. Oh, you had. already did. Okay. Yeah. So we had an existing facility for two years, which we drew down five on. We've been repaying that, and then we've just restructured it now at a better interest rate and with less dilution when it comes to the one. Um, looking forward, then, are you thinking of expanding your portfolio, or are you? Absolutely. Yeah. I really want to expand the portfolio this year. Hopefully, this is a year of growth for us. But again, we're all large shareholders of companies. So yeah. The transactions have to make sense to expand it. We always are looking at that balance, the portfolio diversification. But we really love to bring some new, um, good quality investments that have similar returns that our existing ones have. I mean, our portfolio IRR right now is about 30%, and that's where we're looking to kind of hit that 25 to 30% IRR going forward. So hopefully this is a year of growth. We've yeah. just brought a new VP corporate development in um, to help us you know, with the ammunition that we have from the, the debt facility to really grow Empress and get more diversification. So an investor looking at your company as a prospect might ask, uh, what the upside is of a royalty company versus a junior mining company, which, you know, the upside there is obvious. Yeah, so, I mean, we're directly related to gold and silver price. So you're getting that direct leverage. We don't have the capital costs or the operating costs compared to typical mining companies. We're able to keep the GNA low while that revenue is coming in. And we take it from the top line, whether it's the royalty or the stream. So we're not affected by those inflationary costs that are necessarily happening to the mining companies. And we're really able to target our investment dollars with our strategy of revenue producing assets, bringing cash into the company. Okay, all right. Excellent. Where can we learn more uh, about Empress? Um, at EmpressRoyalty.com. Um, there's a lot of different YouTube channels as well, or a YouTube channel as well. Uh, we're on LinkedIn. Um, you can contact myself or Caitlin, who's our Vice President's Investor Relations. Yeah. We're happy to jump on a Zoom with anyone if they've got more questions. And yeah, we especially as news come out. So we're excited. How, how did this name come about? How did you come up with this name? Um, with Empress Royalty, so when we were looking to list, you have to qualify as an investment issuer. Right. So originally it was an expiration shell that we had. So I had to use the word resources. I couldn't use the word royalty. Right. So I was talking to the board and we wanted a name that would represent the direction we were going. Yeah. And we chose Empress. Okay, very good. Well, I'll put the links in the description down below. Thank you very much, Alexander, thank for your you time. Thank you so much. Thank I you for educating it us. Very yes. much. Thank you everyone for listening. And thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe.